Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at why osmosis actually happens. What is the mechanization? What is the driving force? And it turns out there's not so much of a driving force, it's more of a statistical result of the, of the difference in concentration of the, of the solutions. And so let's try to figure out, let's go through the process of trying to understand what really happens here, because it's kind of really interesting that it's not like the molecules being pushed from one side to the other. It's just something that happens due to what we call thermodynamic processes that take place everywhere in the universe. All right, so I have four items here on the board that we'll go through and see if we understand them. First of all, we assume that the solute molecules are too large to pass through the barrier, that semi-permeable membrane, and that is typically the case. There are some exceptions where that's not the case, there's other things at play, but in the vast majority of cases, the solute molecules are larger than the water molecules, because most of the time the solvent we're dealing with is water, and so therefore they cannot pass through the barrier, however much they try. There's just no space, not enough room for them to pass through, but the water molecules can, so that's our first premise. The second is that osmosis is a result of statistical probability, not a result of forces driving them across the barrier. So it's a thermodynamics thing. And so, of course, the way you have to look at it is in both sides of the membrane, molecules are constantly vibrating at very high vibrational speeds, right? They, they vibrate very, very quickly. There's a lot of kinetic energy within each molecule and they're moving around one another, rolling over one another, just constantly on the move. And so when they get to the membrane, there's a statistical chance that a water molecule will go from the left side to the right side, and there's a statistical chance that a water molecule will go from the right side to the left side. Now, of course, that's not the case for the solute molecules, but it is the case for the solvent molecules, which are small enough to make it through the membrane. Now, thirdly, notice that the solvent molecules, the concentration of them, solvent molecule concentration, is larger on the diluted side of the solution. So on the, in the diluted solution here, you have a greater number or a greater concentration of solvent molecules. There's a lower concentration of solute molecules, which causes there to be a greater concentration of solvent molecules on the left side and the right side. So therefore, statistically, there's a greater chance that a water molecule will be moving in this direction than one that will be moving in that direction, simply because there's more water molecules on the left side than on the right side per unit volume. And so there's going to be more molecules traveling this way across the boundary than traveling that way across the boundary, and the arrows then indicate a greater number of molecules traveling from left to right, a small number of molecules traveling from right to left. And that will continue to do so as long as the, there's a difference in concentration of the two solutions. So therefore, there's a difference in the concentration of the number of solvent molecules, and there'll be more on the left side, on the right side, more on the low or diluted solution side than on the high concentration side of the solution. And then, fourthly, we know that the rate of the flow will be proportional. This symbol here, meant to be proportional to, that's what we use in mathematics, so the rate of flow across that boundary is proportional to the difference in the concentration of the solvent molecules. So if there's many more solvent molecules over here than there, there'll be a large flow across the boundary. If there's just a slight difference between them, there'll be a much lower or slower uh, flow of water molecules across the boundary, but it is dependent upon the difference. So if there's a large difference in concentration, there'll be many more water molecules making it from left to right than right to left, and so there will be therefore a higher osmotic pressure due to the difference in the concentration. So what we're realizing now is yes, if the concentration differences are large, there'll be a lot more water molecules traveling across, there'll be much more osmotic pressure, and if the concentration is very slight, there'll be a far less osmotic pressure. And it turns out, as you will find out in later videos, that osmotic pressure can be absolutely enormous, and it, that is what enables like trees to grow and trees to get water to the leaves high up in the, into their branches, and we'll see later on why that is the case. So at least, I hope now you understand that osmotic pressure is simply a result, not so much of forces, but simply a result of the, the statistical probability that water molecules will travel from left to right in greater numbers than from right to left, simply because the concentration of water molecules there is greater and it is there. And that's the key, the secret to osmosis.